After decades of toiling in inadequate facilities with substandard learning materials, construction began on the Carver School for the area's African-American children in 1939. Located on six acres of land at the corner of Water Street and the 4th Street truck route, the modern $135,000 facility would help put thousands of the region's black children on the highway to success. The dream of Salem-born educator Theron N. Williams became a reality when the doors of this two-story consolidated school opened for students in grades 1st through 12th in September of 1940, 16 months after the groundbreaking. From that day until its closing in 1966, Carver was more than just a place of learning. Children were mentored, nurtured, disciplined, loved, and inspired from the moment they enrolled. The Carver School also served as the primary gathering place for those in the surrounding black neighborhoods and through the years created extended families, lasting relationships, and an unbendable fiber that continues to run through the souls of every person who ever taught or learned there. This is the story of the Carver community. Family, family is the key word. Kava School, consolidated school, first to the 12th grade, represented the greatest family you could have outside of your own family. The first graders all looked up to the older kids, the kids that were seniors, and our greatest desire was to be like them. We were a close-knit family there, and we had so much encouragement from our Parents first, well, from the Lord first. Then from my parents and teachers in the community. It was just a thick community, so to speak, closely knit. We cried together, we laughed together, we played together, and we got serious together. So those are just things that I'll never forget. And I am so grateful for the love and the education I received through my teachers at G.W. Carver. Carver was family. Uh, any event that went on at Carver drew people from all parts of Salem, Vinton, Hollins, and all the small communities in Roanoke County where black folks lived. I mean, it, in many ways, Carver Salem was the glue that kept everything together. It was just the closeness we had with all of, all of our teachers. They were like our moms away from home. Um, our, our men teachers, what few we had, were like our dads away from home. And it was just the closeness there that I don't think any kids anywhere would uh, ever experience that. I really don't. The Carver family grew larger as the years passed and additions were added to the school in 1957 and in 1962. At one point, the school had just under 500 students who were managed by one principal, one assistant principal, 24 teachers, three custodians, one secretary bookkeeper, and just two cafeteria workers. With a staff that size, foolishness of any type wasn't tolerated in the halls or the classrooms. Today, as yesterday, if you don't have discipline, you aren't going to have any kind of problem, whether it's English class, math class, science class. It doesn't make any difference. You have to have discipline if you're going to teach anything. I tried to instill in them that they had potential, and I expected them to work up to it. And I also let it be known I was the only adult in the room 
until another one came in. And that uh, I wasn't going to take any foolishness from anybody. And I'm so thankful that, that my 39 years I taught, I never had a child to be disrespectful and call me out of my name or offer to fight or anything. I, 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 I tried to show them that I love them. And in, in return, they reciprocated. You remember one of the things on television, when so-and-so speaks, everybody listens. And when the, these teachers spoke, every kid listened. And that's what made them good.